peeps, welcome to another video. It's part five of the McCall's 6696 shirt dress sew along and we will be doing the collar and collar stand, buttons and buttonholes. Let's get started. Okay, so next up we're going to do the collar but there's going to be a little bit of prep work and we're not going to do it in the order that the pattern suggests because uh, whilst it works it's not the easiest so we're going to do something else. So I have all my collar pieces and collar stand pieces. I'm going to give them a good iron because, oh my goodness, that's creased. Um, and then I will show you what we're going to do. Okay, so we've got our two collar stand and two collar pieces here. And I'm going to take our one of each and set those aside. And they're going to be the um, upper collar that we're going to interface. But this, so this is going to be the under collar. And what you want to do with both of these is trim off one eighth of an inch around the outer edge. Um, that's going to be not attached to the neckband. So again, and this one is going to be attached there, so you're going to trim off around there. Okay, so I've marked the one eighth of an inch all the way around um, that edge of the collar stand and then this edge of the collar piece. And the reason you want to do that um, is just so it will help um, the collar roll more naturally um, and you won't get puckers when you're sewing it, at least that's the theory. So I'm now going to trim those pieces off. Okay, so I trimmed all the pieces off. Um, that's where the uh, notches are, so that's why they've come off in one piece, in two pieces even. So yeah, trim those off. And so that's going to be the under collar. And got to stand. Okay, so I finally cut out the interfacing uh, from my collar stand and collar, but before I fuse them on, I'm actually going to remove the seam allowance uh, from both pieces, again, um, around the top, the same way, the same places that I removed the one eighth of an inch from the other pieces. So let me show you. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is pin your interfaced collar piece to your dress. You wanna match your notches. I also like to um, mark the center point and with a, I just put a little notch in the dress and then um, sort of finger press this. And I just find that it helps me to um, get any of the fullness that there might be evenly distributed. Um, I'm going to sew it from the dress side up because um, that's the one that's going to need to make sure that there's no pleats or puckers get put in there. So I'm going to give that a, a sew now at uh, 5 eighths of an inch. You also want to note that your um, collar stand is going to ex um, come uh, 5 eighths of an inch beyond the placket. Okay, so now that this is all stitched in um, at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, um, what you want to do now is trim the seam allowance and then press it up towards the collar stand. Now you want to leave yourself um, all of this intact here which will make um, finishing the collar neatly much easier later. So I'm going to start trimming it around about here. Okay, so next up you want to pin your under collar to your interfaced collar and you're going to have to stretch your under collar because you've taken off um, a quarter of an inch off of each end so you'll need to stretch it out um, but that's fine that's very doable lots of pins and then you're going to sew and you're going to sew it five eighths of an inch um, seam allowance um, when you get to the corners you can mark yourself the pivot point on here I tend to do it by eye um, what you want to do is get to the pivot point just a little bit before re reduce your stitch length um, and rather than do a sharp turn do a couple of stitches at like a 45 degree angle and then keep sewing I'll show you okay so I've gotten to around this point and I'm, I've reduced my stitch length um, and like I said I'm going to sew just before the 5 eighths of an inch pivot point and um, do a couple of stitches on a de uh, 45 degree angle so yeah I'm at the um, okay and then I'm going to turn it around and see I'm right at 5 eighths of an inch then and just do probably about another inch at the reduced stitch length and then um, bring it back to the normal length. Okay so as you can see that's kind of where my stitch length um, got reduced. Uh, there's a couple of stitches there on an angle and then gone back and did the same on the other side as well. So the next thing you want to do is trim your seam allowance um, down to about a quarter of an inch, um, very close on here, turn it out and then work the points through so that they are nice and pointy. 
So all that's trimmed off. I like to, I'm probably going to trim a little bit more off of that one just so that the corner is um, easy and there's not too much bulk in there. You've um, done it with smaller stitches so that's very reinforced. So yeah, I'm just going to trim that a little bit more and then I'm going to turn it inside out. So there's my collars turned through. I have a purple, okay, that purple thing, thang. Um, it's amazing, love it. Um, I think it is like a pound, two pounds. Um, if you haven't got one, get yourself one, highly recommend it. But yeah, I'm gonna go press this now. So here is my collar piece, and this is the back. As you can see, because you've done all that prep work, it is rolled under really nicely. Um, so now I am going to top stitch. Top stitching is done, and that's what it looks like from the reverse. So as you can see, your under collar is really away and your over collar is rolled over really nicely. Now to attach it to the collar stand. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is pin your collar to the upper or outer collar stand, so the interface collar stand that has been attached to your shirt dress. Now you want to make sure that the upper collar is facing you and the under collar is facing the sh uh, collar stand. So the interface side is out, up and out and the uninterface side and the smaller side is facing the collar stand. You want to match your notches, which are here, around here somewhere. Where are my notches? There we go. So you want to match your notches up both sides and then pin all along there. And you're going to sew that at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so the collar is now attached. And so this is where we are now going to attach our uninterfaced and slightly smaller inner collar stand. So I'm going to pin that and show you what I've done. Okay, so again, matched up the notches. Where are my notches? There they are. Match up the notches. And when you come to pin the side pieces, you want to turn your seam allowance up so that it matches the one underneath. And then you're going to sew all the way around at 5 eighths of an inch um, seam allowance. And you can mark it on, or you can sew it from this side where you've got your um, seam allowance already uh, marked as well. But yeah, 5 eighths of an inch all the way from there right through to the other side. Okay, so the under collar is attached so i'm going to trim it all down and then turn it out and press it to within an inch of its life and again you want to leave um a decent amount of seam allowance around this area which will make things a little bit bulky but it will just make life easier for you when you are trying to tuck everything and make it behave trust me okay so everything's pressed believe it or not even with those creases and i have turned the seam allowance under um, and pressed it all along the way there so i'm now going to pin it down and then i will top stitch the entire way around okay so i have it all pinned down and i am now going to top stitch and i'm going to top stitch from this side because um, I'm not going to put buttons and buttonholes all the way up to the top of this collar. It's never going to be worn that, that way, closed all the way up. So this is going to be turned out. And so I want the top stitching to look as perfect as it can on this side, not on this side, because this side's not going to get seen hardly at all. So all the top stitching is done. It is definitely not perfect, but um, you have to pick your battles. And I'm pretty pleased with that. And it looks quite good from the other side as well. It's almost finished. I've just got to do the buttons and buttonholes, but yeah, I'm really pleased with how that's coming out so far. So uh, let's just hope my machine behaves and does the buttonholes as it should. So we are going to be doing the buttonholes. Um, I've marked the placement of them. I do my buttonholes horizontally rather than vertically because I just feel that that um, helps to stop gaping um, around the bust and waist area. Um, so yeah, let's just hope my machine is going to behave itself today. It behaved itself and all the buttonholes are in. So now I am going to um, rip them open and then get the placement for the actual buttons. So once all the buttonholes are um, opened up, um, I then pin the two packets together, matching it at the waist and the bottom and then pinning in between. Um, so I can then mark the place that I want my buttons to go. So I put pin through that. And um, yeah, just going to go through and mark all the places where the buttons should be um, positioned. 
I've marked all the placements of my buttons with my friction pen and my machine has a foot that will sew them on and that is what I'm doing and you want to make sure if you have the same sort of foot you want to make sure that this bits down because it actually helps create a shank for the thread which means that you can um, um, your buttons not sitting flush to the fabric and you can um, button your button much easier and um, once your buttonholes and buttons are on your dress is finished really pleased with that and I just hope it fits you have a finished shirt dress. I would love to see what you've created. So if you want to tag me on um, any pictures on Instagram or send me emails with your photos in, I'd love to see them. I really hope you've enjoyed the process and all of the different tips and tricks that I've put together for you. As I said, I found these myself all over the internet. So I've put the links down below if you'd like a, le a more detailed look. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!